What's up guys and welcome to today's video. It's all about alcohol and I am actually currently in the process of doing 30 days sober and who knows, it might even be longer than that. But I thought I'd put this video together for you and share with you guys my experience with drinking alcohol both now and in the past and share with you a couple of tips when it comes to either nights out or drinking in the day, how to avoid it and so on. So here we have three common drinks which people will tend to consume. First one, a pint of lager. In this case, Stella Artois. That's around 227 calories per pint. The next drink is a clear spirit. So whether that be vodka, gin, white rum or tequila, that's around 100 calories. And then obviously if you're adding that with a diet soda, that's not gonna add to the overall calorie intake. Last one we have is a glass of wine. This is a small glass of wine, white wine. And this is around 100 calories. So obviously if you're getting a larger glass of wine, the more calories it's gonna be. So I'm very quickly gonna go through some of the downsides and negative effects of alcohol. I'm not gonna dwell on it too much though. First one, obviously the hangover itself. Pretty sure all of you guys and girls who've drank before have experienced the hangover. It's not great, it's absolutely brutal, particularly if you drank a lot. The more you drink, the more savage the hangover is. Obviously, it's gonna affect your sleep. But you might be able to fall asleep quickly, but you're not gonna get as much REM sleep as you usually would do if you'd not drank at all. So lack of sleep, that means there's gonna be a lot more problems the next day. Third thing, it inhibits the production of the hormone leptin, okay? So you're not gonna feel as full or as satisfied the following day, and you'll find that you will have cravings. A lot of people tend to have cravings the next day for junk food, and they usually break their diet and eat a lot of crap. Another downside is how your body breaks down energy, okay? So instead of using carbohydrates or fats or even protein, it's gonna go straight for the alcohol and start breaking that down as energy. So all those carbs and fats and proteins which you've consumed, they're not going to get used up and a lot of the time it'll just get stored as fat. And another massive downside of drinking alcohol is the effect it has on testosterone production. I think we all know the importance of testosterone when it comes to building muscle. Okay, so if you have one drink, it's not gonna have much of an effect at all, to be honest. But if you're having three drinks or more, that's when it has the effect of seriously dropping your testosterone production. The biggest problem is, is it can take up to two or three days for that testosterone production levels to go back to normal. So if you go on a mad one and have loads of drinks, it's gonna take you more than two days, maybe even three days for your testosterone production to come back up to normal levels. Okay, so I've shown you the calorie content of each of those common drinks. Realistically speaking, you know, if you're drinking the beers, they're gonna have the most calories in, or the cocktails or things which are full of sugar. So if you're gonna be having them, you're gonna be having loads of unnecessary calories with absolutely no nutritional value in them. Okay, so if you are gonna go on a night out, stick to low calorie drinks, right? Particularly if you're cutting. In fact, if you're cutting and you're struggling to lose body fat, you shouldn't be drinking in the first place. But anyway, what you can do, if you are gonna go out and drink, you're gonna have to adjust what you're eating throughout the day, right? So if you know you're gonna have 500 calories worth of alcohol or 1,000 calories worth of alcohol, and you're trying to stay within a certain calorie limit or intake for that day, you're gonna have to take away food from what you've eaten that day. So realistically, you know, you wanna try and keep your protein high, you just gonna have to pull back on the fats and pull back on the carbs. Yes, it's not ideal because like I said, the alcohol has no real nutritional value in it, but if you're cutting, you don't wanna gain body fat, that's a sacrifice you're gonna to have to make. The same thing applies to your training programming, okay? You need to decide when you're gonna be doing what, especially if you're gonna get out on the weekend, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna be going to the gym the next day after the night out. Okay, I wouldn't even suggest to you that would be a bad idea. It's gonna be the least efficient, the least efficient session of the whole entire week. <clears throat> and then the day of drinking, again, you can get away with training. You have gotta think a lot of the recovery you do after the gym session is gonna be done in the next 24 to 48 hours. But if you go out and you drink, protein synthesis is gonna be low, testosterone production is gonna be low. So let's say, for example, you had a huge leg workout, you know, if you look at that three day period after training legs and then going on a mad bender that night, it's not gonna be that great. So save the big workouts midweek, the lighter ones, more cardio based ones or isolation based ones for the weekend. So what I've been doing recently, if I'm either on a night out and I don't wanna drink any more alcohol or if I'm actually going on a night out and I don't wanna drink any alcohol at all, I'll get myself a alcoholic free beverageado. And usually, because I would usually drink like a vodka lime soda or a vodka diet coke, I just go and ask for like a diet Pepsi, diet coke, or a diet seven up, or even just soda water, just a glass of soda water. And then I'll walk over to my friends and I'll just be standing there with my drink like, ah yeah, having a great time. And everyone is just assuming I'm drinking. They don't question, oh, why are you not drinking? And you know, sometimes it's weird. If you're standing there without a drink, you kind of feel like you should be holding on something. 
So even just standing there holding a drink actually feels like you're, you know, you're part of the group, you're involved. Okay, so a few little tips to not drink if you're faced with the situation of drinking. First one is just don't go out, right? Especially if you know it's gonna be a big one. Like I know if I get invited by some of my friends, a particular group of friends, or we're going out tonight, come. You know, if I know what's gonna happen, I'll just straight up say no a lot of the time now because it's not worth it. Second thing you can do, maybe you might need to change the people you're hanging around with. I know that's kind of a sacrifice I had to make, particularly when I was living in Leeds, when I was living in Newcastle. My close friends, they were big drinkers. And even though I still love them all to bits, I had to kind of reduce the amount of time I was spending with them because every time I was hanging out with them, they were just going to the pub or going on big nights out, which I just, I couldn't, obviously, for my career, my business, and my physique it would have gone straight downhill. So I still see them, I just limit how often I see them. The same for you guys. If you do have like a wild group of friends, you know, maybe don't see them quite as often or maybe see them during a the day. And then it might be the case where you just have to go and look for, or look to meet new groups of friends, new people who are actually more into what you like doing or aren't really into drinking. So I'm going to share with you guys my experience of drinking alcohol. I'm no stranger to it, I do enjoy a drink, sometimes more than others. Particularly if you see my transformation video, you saw that when I was growing up as a teenager, when I went to university, even my early 20s, I did indulge in quite a lot of drinking. It didn't really hold me back from building a physique, but definitely the progress which was made was a lot slower than it could have been if I just not drank at all. But it's one of those things, you know, particularly if you're English, English people tend to drink quite a lot, and I'm sure a lot of other cultures do as well. One thing which I noticed, when I came to Dubai, right, this was beginning of January, I said to myself I wasn't gonna get caught up in going out and drinking, but I did, because I was in a new place, there was lots of opportunity here to go out, meet new people, and I was in a good position financially. Everything was going good, so I was enjoying myself. I was like, why not celebrate, okay, I'm in a new place. And I noticed, just from going out twice a week, sometimes it might have been more, drinking, maybe, you know, it was to the point where I was realistically drinking more than five drinks in one night. My physique very quickly started to go downhill. You probably even noticed this, you know, if you look at my videos. Like, I would say realistically, that's probably the worst I've looked for a good few years. You know, I'd lost a lot of size. I didn't even really look that shredded. I was kind of just like a skinnier, a little bit fatter version than I had been in the past. And I blame that largely down to the alcohol which I was drinking, okay? Not only that, but obviously the, the poor sleep which I was having, the poor choices I was making nutrition-wise because my, you know, my cravings were higher than usual, my discipline was lower. There were so many downsides associated to going out and drinking. And I just got to the point, I was like, what's the point in doing this? Like, my job is to obviously provide you guys with content, to look my best, and to feel my best. And if I'm drinking, I'm not feeling like that. And I'm certainly not looking like that. And I feel as though I'm just wasting a lot of the potential which I could have as having one of the best physiques in the world. I'm kind of throwing it away. So I said to myself, right, I'm going to cut this down. There's no, I don't want to do this anymore. So I said to myself, right, let's do it. 30 days, no drink. Let's see how it goes from there. I'll tell you what, I'm probably, I think I'm on day like 27 now and I feel amazing. I feel as though I've managed to put on a lot more muscle mass. I feel fresh every day when I wake up. My mind is a lot more clear. I'm a lot more positive. And I kind of realized that I don't necessarily need to drink alcohol to have a good time when I go on a night out. Yeah, sometimes you might not have as much fun, but you can still have a good time, all right? And like I said, there's nothing better than waking up fresh in the morning. If you wake up, nobody ever wakes up in the morning and is like, oh God, I'm really annoyed I didn't drink last night, okay? Most of the time it's the op complete opposite. So what I have planned for the future after this whole experience of not drinking, I'm not gonna completely abstain from drinking alcohol because realistically, you know, I, I'm gonna drink again but I'm definitely going to be saving it for special occasions and not drink like once every week because honestly it's, it's just not worth it right time is too valuable I've got too much going on I can't afford to be lazing around doing nothing the next day being unproductive borderline depressed and you know eating things I shouldn't be eating because realistically that's what happens when I'm over I, 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 nothing good comes from it right not to mention some of the questionable decisions which are made on that night when you are under the influence and one thing this is very important okay for you guys who are trying to reach their goals whether it be in their career or whether it be down to their physiques you know, achieving a certain body fat percentage or building muscle mass if you're complaining about not making progress and not being where you want to be yet you're going out and you're drinking on a regular basis, you have no right to complain, okay? You have absolutely no right to complain. If you want it badly enough, right, and you're not seeing progress, but you're going out and drinking, cut out the drinking, okay? 
you will notice so many positives come from that if you just cut it out. And even if it comes down to just, you know, you having like four drinks on a Saturday or like five drinks or something like that, that can have an impact. But, you know, if you're making progress and things are going well, then you can enjoy yourself, you can have a few drinks. Maybe you just have to be realistic and honest with yourself and ask, is this actually holding you back or not? So that is the video, folks. My thoughts on alcohol and how it can affect your progress, what you can do if you are gonna go out and drink or at least minimize your alcohol intake. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys soon.